Big news, SEC officially approved 11 applications for Bitcoin ETFs. And this is a big deal because some people are saying, wait a minute, doesn't this make this official? Kathy Wood came out saying, I think Bitcoin is about to go to a million and a half. She's saying it made 30x what it is today. Many people are losing their minds. BlackRock, Fidelity Investments, ARK Investments, Invesco, Wisdom Tree, Bitwise Asset Management, Valkyrie, Grayscale are some of the applications that are being submitted. Now, SEC Chair Gary Gensler comes out. And by the way, Gary Gensler is loved by the XRP folks. He's a sweetheart. They just love him. They always send him nice love letters. But uh, he comes out and says the following. He says, accompanying the agency's approval of Bitcoin ETFs warned that the fund's approval shouldn't be taken as an indication the agency is backing off crypto enforcement. Here's this quote. Today's action does not approve or endorse crypto trading platforms or intermediaries, which for the most part are non-compliant with the federal securities law and often have conflict of interest. So some may say, well, isn't this kind of like if ETF approves of these 11 applications, isn't this like one step closer for regulation? Like that's exactly what Gary wants. No, isn't he trying to find out exactly what's going on with the money there? Possibly we can talk about that as well. But here's the key. The reason why this is important, when you look at all the asset classes of different generations, this is what you'll find. There's roughly $156 trillion in U.S. assets. And you can see the dark green to the left is boomers. Half of it, boomers have. Gen X has 30% of it. Silent generation has 12% of it. And millennials have 8.5% of it. But on the baby boomer side, look at equities and mutual funds. How big is that? $19 trillion. Can you imagine now these companies reaching out to these boomer clients and saying, hey, you got all this money. How about we take some of your $19 trillion and put a small percentage of it in ETF? What could that do to the Bitcoin ETF? Who knows? But we're going to talk about all of that today. So if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So now if you're watching this, you're like, Pat, the last thing you said is $19 trillion of the boomers' assets. If they take a small percentage of it, what could that do to Bitcoin? Because currently Bitcoin's market cap is only around $800 billion. So when Kathy Wood says 30X, that means 800 billion would be what? $24 trillion? Maybe that's kind of crazy by 2030. I'll give you Elon Musk's prediction at the end as well. But could the 800 billion go to 8 trillion? That's 10X. Could that happen? Maybe that's something to think about. And have people already started putting money into the ETFs? They have. Here's what it's looking like. On their initial trading day Thursday, Bitcoin ETFs recorded inflows exceeding $4.3 billion, establishing an unprecedented milestone for exchange traded funds. Products BlackRock Inc.'s iShare Bitcoin Trust ETF attracted over a billion dollars and Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust experienced inflows surpassing $2 billion. The reason why this is important is take a look at some of the dates here and see what happened on June 16th. 2023, BlackRock filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF. They called it iShares Bitcoin Trust. At the time, Bitcoin was trading at $25,500, but quickly shot up beyond $30,000. Bitcoin has gained roughly 63% since BlackRock filed its ETF application. And BlackRock names JP Morgan as authorized participant for spot Bitcoin ETF, which means, in a way, JP Morgan Chase and BlackRock is saying, Bitcoin is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. However, this can't all be good, right? Like you got to sit there and say, there's got to be something bad about this. Does it hurt any aspect of Bitcoin? Here's what Arthur Hayes had to say. He's the co-founder of BitMEX. He says BlackRock will completely destroy Bitcoin. Now, why is that? Based on their direct and indirect investment, it is estimated that BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard collectively own 1% and 2% of all Bitcoin in circulation. Hayes argument is that if BlackRock, which is in the asset accumulation game, vacuums up all the Bitcoin, there will be no more Bitcoin transactions. And those who secure the Bitcoin network in return for fees and newly minted Bitcoin known as miners would be unable to afford the energy it costs to secure the network. As a result, they would shut off their machines without the miners, the network dies and Bitcoin vanishes. So now why is he saying this? What's the big deal with miners? Like, what do you mean if they don't do anything with it? Are miners that important? Look how much Bitcoin devours electricity more than many countries out there. When you look at this chart at the top, you'll see annual electricity consumption in comparison. China's number one, US is two, Germany's three, all the world's data centers is four. Look what's next. Bitcoin, more than Norway, more than Bangladesh, more than Switzerland, more than Google, more than Facebook. It's more than Google and Facebook combined times eight. That's a lot of energy. So his argument comes back to how Bitcoin transactions work. 
To limit inflation, Bitcoin creator designed Bitcoin to only have 21 million Bitcoins. However, Bitcoin only exists if it moves. When a Bitcoin transaction is made, miners take the information and apply a mathematical formula verifying the transaction and adding it to the blockchain. This process is known as proof of work. It's called that because the process of mining is very hard and time consuming, requiring large amounts of processing power and time, multiple confirmations, other miners verifying the blocks, are typically needed for a transaction to be considered secure. As a reward for their services, miners are paid in Bitcoin for each new block they add to the blockchain. So now there's a lot of predictions being made about is this thing going to hit $100,000 before the end of the year or not? There's one chart that shows it will because of the history of what happens to Bitcoin when it goes through halving. Let me kind of explain to you what this means. The size of Bitcoin block rewards is halved after the creation of every 210,000 blocks, which takes around four years. At Bitcoin's inception in 2009, each block reward was worth 50 Bitcoins. In May 2020, the block reward was halved a third time to 6.25 Bitcoins. In 2023, there were 19.4 million Bitcoins in existence, 92% of the total planned supply. The block reward is scheduled to reach zero around May of 2140, but mining will likely no longer be profitable long before that date is reached. As of April 2030, about 99.6% of Bitcoins will already have been issued and the block reward will be just 0 0.19531250 Bitcoins. So when you look at this chart, this is what you'll notice. First halving that took place November 20, 2012, Bitcoin was roughly $12.22. Now, four years later, July 9th of 2016, Bitcoin at the time, that's the second halving, it was priced at $6.57.61. Then go back four years later, which is May of 2020, third halving, Bitcoin was worth $9,500. And then this year, the date they're looking at that's going to halve again is April 22nd of 2024, Nobody knows what number it's exactly going to be at, but everyone's guesstimating that number is going to be higher. And that's why some people are speculating Bitcoin is going to hit $100,000 this year. And by the way, remember, this is all just hypotheticals, what we're talking about. I don't want you to get off this thing here and go buy Bitcoin and say, well, you know, according to this video that Pat did, Bitcoin's going to go. Th no, no. I'm just giving you data and trends for you to consider. Yes, Elon Musk says it's going to go to a million dollars. Yes, Kathy Wood says it goes to a million and a half. But John McAfee a few years ago said it was going to go to $100,000 when it was at nine, and it didn't happen. So don't jump to conclusion with all these different predictions people are making. It's just look at the numbers and then see your risk tolerance time horizon, make the decision based on that. Here's another one to consider. Global liquidity. If you look at this chart, what do you notice? The more liquid money that we have worldwide, look what happens to Bitcoin. And this same applies to SMP. It's not like this is an epiphany moment of a chart we're looking at. This goes with everything. The more liquid assets, liquid money that's out there. Last but not least, to compare the three, gold, fiat, which is a US dollar in crypto. This is the argument that's made by the Bitcoin community. Fungible, interchangeable, high, high, high. Non-consumable, the same. Portability, gold, moderate, the rest, high, high. Durable, high, fiat, moderate, crypto, high. Secure, you see moderate, moderate, high. Easily transactable, low, gold. High, high. Scarce, moderate, low, high. Sovereign, government issued, low, high, low. Decentralized as of today, because if Gary Gensler has it his way, this may change. Low, low, high, smart programmable, low, low, high. And by the way, this is not a you know article written by you know Coinbase or something. This is Investopedia that puts something out there for the average person to be thinking about. They're not leaning one way or another. They're just kind of giving you the feedback. So look, I mean, obviously, to me, when a BlackRock and a J.P. Morgan Chase is approving something like this. That's the closest thing to the U.S. government, given the okay that you're doing this. So what does that really mean? Does that mean it's official, it's real? The biggest critics that said they would never, ever do anything like this, now they're doing it? What does that do? It means yes. It means boomers who trust level and risk tolerance is probably the lowest they don't trust anything new. They don't like any changes. They don't want to do anything that's out of the ordinary. Now this gets to Boomer, who are the richest people, 50% who are like, hey, what do you think, John Doe at Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley? You may want to put 5%. You may want to put 3% of what? Of 19 trillion? What's 5% of 19 trillion? It's a trillion dollars. What does that do? Instant double. Is that what that means? Maybe. Again, everything I said is pure speculation, but I'm researching and looking at the topic myself, just like you are. Before you make any crazy decision with your money, go do more research on, on your own. Talk to your advisor if it makes sense, then consider it. 
but this is definitely a very big event, maybe one of the biggest historic events that took place with Bitcoin. That's why the entire industry is talking about this. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. At the same time, we did a video on collapsing of the US dollar. Then we studied currencies that we've had, how many currencies we've had worldwide, like world currencies, and the cycle. Could this be a change that's taking place? Nobody knows, but I suggest you go watch that video. Very, very interesting on what's happened with the history of currency. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.